Okay, this is definitely a video I never thought I'd make. Uh, a guy emails me up and says, hey, I'd like to do an RGB mod on my test station. Yeah. First, I shit my pants. I'm like, I couldn't reply fast enough. I'd be like, I'd love to have RGB mod a test station. I'd love to just see one. You know, let alone actually have one in my house for me to play with. And here it is. Uh, I got it the other day. Um, not as impressive in real life, honestly, <laughs> but super cool. So I think what I'm going to do is do at least a three-part video here where, like, first off, I'm just going to show how it works because a lot of people probably have never seen one, probably never will see one, never heard of it, whatever. Uh, I'll probably do a teardown video where I show the insides of it, a couple surprises in there, and then uh, the last video will probably just be of the actual RGB mod. I am doing a NES RGB Tim Worthington board inside of it. Uh, it might be a little bit tricky to figure out because this thing does use composite video and RF for a bunch of it, the tests that it does. So we might end up actually putting in the four position switch that actually turns off the NES RGB board altogether to just use the original PPU to leave it back to its factory way of working. Um, the owner does have the original uh, was a 14 inch CRT TV um, I said you know no reason to send it right now I think if I could do the RGB mod to the CRT that would be super cool because then we could actually output RGB right to the CRT but I don't know that the on-screen display on that tube TV is actually RGB capable uh, he sent me a pic of it and all I seen was the the green uh, lettering on you know with the static background so I'm not I might have never done one I've always wanted to do one where you take some uh, just cheap CRT TV and modify the input of the on-screen display and you can actually feed it RGB and it'll you know it'll do this basically you'll have so many PVM from a cheap piece of crap CRT TV always want to do one never did uh, it is fairly complicated though but I don't think that 14-inch CRT TV that came with a test station is even capable of doing that because, you know, it's probably a late 80s, early 90s TV anyway. Um, it, I do have a composite and RF going. And if I'm being honest, not super impressed with the picture of either. The composite is actually super bright and the RF is super dark. I do see a lot of interference in the RF, and I don't know that I'm, it just, it feels like I'm seeing diagonal lines in the composite, but whatever, you know. Um, if you didn't know, a test station does play regular cartridges, US cartridges. And there's this big knob up here, you can switch, and it goes over to where the controller plugs in and it brings up the test cart menu where you can do controller, zapper, rob, and power pad test through here. There's also a 5 volt DC output jack there and I have yet to figure out what that's for. If anybody knows, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll do a test of it also. And if you turn the knob around, let's see, up front there's a power switch, a reset switch, and then there's also an AV and RF switch and it does light up and I have no clue what it does because I get both of them at the same time. I, I don't really know. I don't really get it. One thing I do notice is uh, on my test cart the RF has a kind of a green. The menu is green and then like around here is green and it's not doing that on composite. I see a little bit of green there and a little bit coming off of the E. A little bit down here. I don't know. So, what else? There is a AC adapter test. Plug in the AC adapter. Now well, that thing is super loose. It'll work. Ah, fail. Let's see if I put some pressure on it. Pass. Now there again, it's this is gray and that's green. That's 
really weird. Although it could be my my uh, PVM is dying too because earlier I wasn't getting any picture until I played with it or I, I turned it off and turned it back on and I finally got a picture. Let's see, if we come down we can do an RF switch test. And there's also, let's see I can do this one quicker, an AV cable test where you can plug in both ends of an AV cable. I guess I'll just use the composite cord I was feeding to the PVM. Video and a red here. Or video and audio. Please wait. AV cable test pass. That's all it does, is just test your cords. Wouldn't think to do something as simple as that, really. But, yeah. And, let's see, I think I can grab an RF switch pretty easy. This is an RF switch I've already tested, so I know it works. Turn the knob over. Let's see. There's three ports. Three connectors. One that connects to the Nintendo, one that connects to the TV, and the one that connects to the antenna. No pass fail, I guess if you're seeing it, then it's working. Let's try to unplug one and see what happens here. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. What about if we unplug the NES? Huh. Cool. And unplug the TV. <laughs> That's weird. The only thing is, well, actually, I guess if I not plug in anything of the RF adapter, I still get composite output. So, antenna and NES, still nothing. So I guess if you've got a bad RF adapter, you just won't get any output. Strange. Um, there's also one over here for control deck, and it has RF, audio, and video RC jacks. I assume that is just for hooking up the output from your front loader straight to that to see if you have output here. If that's what it is, then that's lame, because I don't know what, what's that, what's that going to tell me really. But I do have the top loader sitting here. RF adapter. I can put it right into the RF input. was on channel three. TV's on channel four. So that's lame. I don't know. I mean maybe just have easy access to those ports instead of going to the back of the TV. The only reason I can think of to have those there. And then
anything really left. And the cartridge. Reset works. First controller works. Flip it over to the menu. I mean, that's all controller port stuff. I really don't know any of that stuff uses the 5 volt input. I looked at my Rob. Rob doesn't have a 5 volt port. And they had some kind of adapter to run so you could run him not on batteries but off of that 5 volt. That'd be cool if it exists. So let's have a look at the rest of it. Here's the front panel. Lettering across the front. Here's your main buttons. And here's the main control knob. Cartridge input. AC adapter test. RF adapter test. AV cable test. AV input ports. And your controller ports. And if we spin it around the side here, have the composite audio and RF outputs. And there is a 2 amp and 4 amp breaker. And then an AC output, a 4 amp AC output, maybe for the TV. And the only thing across the back is the power cord port and the top seems to have some kind of setup for the TV maybe I don't know if this is what it uh, spins on and this is like a stopper and this is just what they what the TV sits on and on this side we have a couple ports I believe this one is unused I'll show it more in the teardown and I believe this one is where the Super Nintendo test stuff plugs into. I don't know much about it. I did. There was a, an auction for one of these test stations on eBay recently, and it had everything NES and SNES and CRT. And they said that it doesn't show anything on the TV, but it just has some lights to show that the Super Nintendo is working. I don't really know for certain. So that's basically your Nintendo's test station. Super rare item. Uh, you know, I I think you'd be lucky to find one for anything less than man, I don't even know a grand. But I'd say if you can find one for a deal, you better snatch it up because these things are rare. <laughs>